Hi, uh, welcome back to part uh, three of Rigging the Scorpion. Uh, so sorry this episode took a little bit longer. Um, last time we did basic IK for the hands and this time I want to focus on the legs. So testing fabric IK and CCD IK and then at the end showing some other um, IK notes I found useful but haven't used in this uh, in this rig. So here is how we left him. So last time I said we did um, basic IK for the hands and in the first part uh, we did uh, this distributed rotation thing. So now we want to focus on the leg and the leg as you can see is uh, is containing uh, two knees. Uh, so basic IK doesn't help here. Um, so let's let's start. Um, first I decouple this and then we focus only on the leg for now. So to control it we need to, we need to control. So right click new new control and then let's rename it to IK leg uh, leg, leg front L. Um, so we have that, um, and uh, now let's move it to the to the right uh, position. So let's move it near the bone we want to manipulate. So that's basically the same. Um, and then I do right click and say set initial transform from closest bone. So now it's there. Uh, now uh, instead of um, just a ball here as a control. Let's find the gizmo uh, that that works. So I will get out of the way so you can see more. Uh, let's go here and do the pyramid, for example, pyramid thick, which is kind of a little bit big, but let's fix that. Um, so first of all, uh, we have to rotate it 180 degree around um, Y. So it's this, and then let's find a proper um, would, would work 0 0.2 or something like that uh, should give us a nice uh, pyramid and now a little bit of an offset for the location um, so maybe like 4 or something like that yeah that works so now here here it is uh, so we have a control for our lag and now let's uh, let's try how we can um, uh, inverse control um, which is inverse kinematic how we control the leg so th there are different uh, there are different nodes so if you go to hierarchy here you have quite a bunch of them and I will have an overview at the end uh, to show you but um, for now let's let's start with basic fabric um, and if you if you read the notes it's uh, it's, uh, it can solve n bones chains using the forward and backward reaching inverse kinematic algorithm. I have no idea what it really does. Uh, so basically, let's try and go from uh, leg front uh, one L. So if I uh, if I select my bone here, um, my foot, I can see the whole chain. So we actually want to simulate from here uh, to our foot front. Um, and then hopefully the knees will solve themselves when we move this. So that's the basic idea. So we go from leg front to uh, foot front uh, L. And you can see it's already flipping there because um, currently I have now effector transform. So it takes zero zero zero, which is my scene route. And now I get my a new control. Let's get our I key leg front L we just made and then put this transform in. So that looks already cool. So it's snapping back. Um, and now let's let's move it a bit. So you can see it is already looking not too bad, but you see the knees are getting really crazy. Because um, from what I understand, what Fabric is basically doing, it doesn't take care of any limitation for rotation. So it's just a positioning I key. So that he just tries to find the right position uh, for it, uh, trying to contain the bone length uh, and doing this. So this is for our leg as it looks hurtful. That's not what we what we want. But it was it was worth a try. Um, so let's get rid of that and see what else we can use. So there is CCD I key. Um, and if you check here, it is uh, saying it uh, chains using the uh, cyclic coordination descent inverse kinematic algorithm. Sounds really fancy. From what I understand, you basically have no rotation limits and it's taking in account um, that the bones are uh, rotated, uh, not like weirdly like before. So it's not just about position, it's also about rotation. So let's take that and then again, we say leg front, uh, one L uh, to leg 
uh, to foot uh, foot front L, which is our bone chain here, and then we take this effector so it snaps back. That looks good. So let's move around and see what what's happening now. So this is much better. As you can see, he's trying um, to um, to keep the um, to keep the rotation of the bones intact. Um, we can uh, we can improve this a bit. The precision right now is not really fitting to the size of my character. So let's reduce this. Um, and you can immediately see it's snapping back a bit. So if I do the precision and if you go really close here, you will see uh, it is a bit of an offset. Um, and that depends, from what I figured out, depends on the size of your of your skeleton and how a precise the mathematics has to be. Another thing uh, I figured out you can do is you can increase the uh, iterations uh, or decrease it. Um, uh, I, I think so. So values between five, four, 4 and 16 are common. So it, again, it it seems that it depends highly on your on your skeleton and what you want to do. Um, then you can say if you want to start the resolving from the tail or from the um, uh, from the other side. So it's uh, uh, that that gives different behavior. So for me, start from tail looks better. Um, I, I think again that depends on what you want to achieve. And then you have the base rotation limit, which is nice. So basically, he's trying to keep this angle. So if I reduce this, I even get better results, at least for mine. So this looks already pretty nice. Um, what you also could do is uh, have rotation limits for the different bones. So if I want to have different limits for different bones, I, I, I can, uh, I can uh, add that. Um, but but for me, that's not. Um, that's not what what I want, so let's delete that. Um, yeah, so that's basically how I uh, I figured out um, how how this works. And then then if you go for example for the body, we don't have a control there yet, but let's do here right click and then control tra uh, bone transform. Then you can see now it begins to to live uh, um, only with this one leg. So I ha would have to repeat this now. Um, but let's speed this a bit up. Uh, the cool thing is, I um, I have a second project that's a bit ahead, so this is uh, how I made that. And here are the notes. So see what I can do. I can just copy those notes over. So that should work. And then what I also can do is I just copy over uh, the notes here. Um, there's Python scripting, so you can also use that. And there are, I know from improvements that are coming to make this kind of work uh, faster. Um, and, and, and there are also some, some minor bugs. So what, what happened now here is if you take a close look, some of the connections uh, went a little bit crazy, uh, but that's easy to fix. Uh, so let's see that we execute. So this is in the right order and every control fits there. So now you can see I, I just copied the stuff over and, and, and now if I grab it, see if this worked. I hope that worked. Yeah, nice. Uh, so it's even better visible if you, if I go here again to the body and next time we should really do a control for the body. Then you can see now with all the I key for the legs, this is the first time uh, this looks really like a, a living character. Uh, I love that moment. It's really cool. So um, yeah, so see how happy he is that his legs are working now. Uh, yeah, so this this is good. Um, so that's basically uh, how how the legs are done. Um, so as a closure note uh, for this part, I want to go a little bit through the other I key notes that are uh, there. So basic I key. Uh, we had already. Um, uh, there's even more to it. Uh, you, you can manipulate a lot, but what I want to point out, there's also a node that's not executing uh, the new position of the bone, but you can calculate it, and then you can do stuff on top of that before you feed it into the bone. So this is really, really cool. So um, with, with this, you could do some uh, additional simulation before you feed it, or you can use this value for something else. So this is kind of nice. Uh, just don't get uh, confused because that's basic IKEA and the other one is called basic IKEA positions. 
and that is a node that you can see it has no execution uh, nodes that's something where you feed the values in and you get values out and then you need to execute them by themselves basic fabric we, we checked today um, ccd i key we used for the legs there's spring i key which has um, a verli uh, integrator so it is like a spring it can it can move a bit and um, yeah th this is nice but we will do the simulation stuff the next time so basically the next episode i want to uh, focus on verli and how do we do the wobbling and and, and more dynamic with um, a simulation and then you have the aim um, I, I think the only thing i can say about the aim is it's like you use it basically for a head for example to look at something um the only thing i figured out is important to to note is uh, by default this is set to direction and uh, that can be confusing uh, you want to have it as location to understand the node first at least for me that was easier because then the target is really the location he's looking at and the target is not the direction he's looking at um so maybe maybe check that if, if this note confuses you. Then there is a fit chain on curve, uh, which is also pretty nice. So for example, I was, um, and maybe we do an extra part of that. I was trying to use this for the uh, for the tail. So you can uh, calculate a Bezier uh, curve here, uh, feed it in, and then you can say which bones, and then the bones try to follow that curve, which is nice. So in the last one, and, and actually this one, let's let's check out this one really briefly, is multi-effector fabric. Um, this is uh, kind of powerful, and I haven't uh, I haven't really used it for uh, for mine, but I, I I can see where this uh, this multi-fabric is 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 heading to because this is like um, first step of a full body eye key. Uh, so you can do already a lot with that so let's let's check that so basically you say the root bone which in my case might be the body and then let's do effector bone and then let's do our food uh, front uh, l um, and and then get let's get our leg i key uh, front for that and uh, use the translation uh, for that and then you can see nothing not, it seems that nothing happened and actually what's really interesting is it uh, it has as said it's a it's a fabric so it doesn't care for the rotation as we had before so but basically it behaves like that but where it's getting really interesting is we could do now uh, food front R and we take the um, uh, where is it uh, leg front R so we take our control here uh, and we feed this in so now we have both. And now, if I move my my body um, around, it is already solving it as one chain. So this is interesting. So uh, I don't know. Maybe I will try to do this with an octopus or something like that. But but this is nice. I, I think uh, he's a lot of potential, and I hope that this grows uh, to an even bigger uh, thingy. So yeah. But let's uh, finish this by just cleaning up uh, and having the status so for the next time um, we uh, we can continue here so that's it for ikey uh, next time i would focus on simulation nodes to do um, something like uh, transfer some of the movement of the legs to the to the body or have this wobbly arms this is really really nice stuff and then I want to thank you for all the positive uh, feedback and likes and some up and people reaching out. It's really, really exciting. Um, that will keep me going. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I try to be there and, and answer them uh, or address them in one of the next parts. So thanks for watching and uh, have a great day and stay safe.